It's the When Fishing Podcast. Applying techniques. Then I put the sea rigs on the A rig. Fresh ideas. They can't all be good ones. Talking stories. Yo, oh, oh, oh. Reports. Hold out, bad, not that conservation. You're probably too close. All to make you and I better fishermen. Hello and welcome to another episode. <laughs> Bringing the energy today. I got a couple of reports and then uh, not a whole lot else, but this is a weekly podcast, so we're going to get into it. So, uh, fish the rockfish opener on April 1, and I ain't fooling you. What did I do? Uh, I had a, you know, just kind of a half day kind of fishing trip and, uh, went out by my lonesome as usual and brought, brought a little squid, brought the flukes and, uh, did a dro- double dropper loop over in a uh, 300 feet of water to start, had a good tide swing to work with, uh, no wind once I was on the grounds. Uh, about me and a dozen of my best friends were on the grounds uh as far as uh, other boats that's a uh, it's a dozen other boats if you're counting and uh didn't look like anybody else was doing very good but uh on my second drop i got i got my first fish and the third drop i got a real nice paizon and uh uh started to load up real quick on the paizons and then uh uh got a few nice reds in the mix and then there were a few other uh, I think that was it over there and then I got up to nine and then uh oh and some chili peppers that's what it was some smaller chili peppers and uh I got my count up to nine so I was one short of my rockfish limit and then all of a sudden the bite stopped of course so uh uh, I tried too hard for like an hour or more to uh, try and get that last fish, and it just wasn't happening. So I moved into shallower water looking for the flat fish, and uh, find them I did, along with some other stuff. I didn't expect that. Last time I was over on uh, on this spot, it was all white fish and like a sand bass or something like that. And uh, this time I got, um, just in this like, little area alone I, I picked off like over a dozen white fish uh, a few small vermilions um sand dab sand bass uh square bear uh i guess that was it but it was good it was like you know like 20 fish or something on that spot and then um and then the wind was picking up just as i was running out of squid very timely uh made my way home and uh only started to get soaked on in the last like half mile or so before I got to the harbor. So that was nice. Very well timed. And uh got some food fish that I still haven't run out of after a week. So that's that's good. Very uh very satisfying trip. Could be could have been a little bit better on the quality. I had uh the reds were pretty good size, not huge, but but uh a pretty good size and like one or two really solid uh pythons and everything else was kind of average but uh when i got back to the dock it seemed like uh whoever i whoever i overheard talking was like oh we got a couple small ones but it wasn't very good and you know we tried everywhere from three to six hundred and i was like okay so i was a i was a lucky duck at this day so yeah um and I came into it with uh, uh, sort of the fish finder rig of uh, double dropper loop, 12 ounces of weight, and 300 plus feet of water. And uh, and the weight held pretty good for the most part. Uh, I was almost straight up and down on it and wasn't, wasn't losing uh, contact with the bottom very easily, so that was nice. And uh, the... Uh, started with squid strips or squid little, little lollygo rings and, uh, uh, and the flukes, five inch flukes and the fish were really keyed in on the flukes and really didn't get bit much on the squid. So I switched them out for double, double flukes and that worked out very well. 
So, yeah. Boccaccio are very keyed in on fin bait in general. I've always found that to be the case. And so I used to not use fin bait at all because uh, we didn't want the... We didn't want those pythons. We they're chewy and wormy and no redeeming qualities. But um, these days I don't mind them. I kind of like them. They're uh, as long as you treat them right. I now I deep fry them. Like trick myself into thinking I'm eating calamari and uh, and it's a little bit more tender than calamari. So it's a it's a good food fish in that regard. So long as you cook it and you don't eat the worms. Although I think there are certain worms. Uh, that you can eat in fish and they won't like transfer to you they won't cause any issues to you I saw that from an east coaster so like yeah so go eat some worms kids and get back to me on how that goes for you email me so yeah so there was that trip and then uh and there was some shitty weather through the week, as there has been, and now we're in a really nice weather window. And uh, I was I wanted to fish Thursday and Friday. Today is Friday. Uh, I'll be releasing this in like as, pretty much as soon as I am done recording it. I figure, so long as, um, you know, God willing. But uh, so I'm training for a new job that'll hopefully pay for my next boat. And uh, so that took up the, the weather windows that I really wanted, which was uh, today and yesterday in the AMs. But uh, that, that wasn't going to happen. So I went Wednesday morning. That kind of opened up. It wasn't looking good. And then at the last second, it was looking good. So I went for it. And uh, it was pretty nice. A little bit of a short uh, short period, but it wasn't um, wasn't causing any serious inconvenience. So I can't complain. Pretty nice, uh, pretty nice wind-wise. Came up a little bit towards the end, as as expected around here. But uh, uh, I originally wanted to go way out for the rockfish, like try the kind of offshore rockfish, if you will. And uh, and then I realized that my uh, my VHF, I hadn't charged it. My little handheld standard Horizon. Uh, was not charged, would not turn on. Uh, when it, it gets wet uh, from like from the mist on the boat ride home, I normally leave it off. Um, and just I'd prefer to just use it for emergencies. I used to think it was funny to uh, stay on like channel out here, like channel sixty nine or seventy two, and listen in to what people are saying and um, contribute. And then I'm like, after a while, I was like, you know what? I don't even want. If anybody even hints at where fish are, then uh, I don't want to know. I want to. I want to do it myself. So, uh, so, yeah. So I don't really even listen. I just want to keep it on board as an emergency, and just you know, if I'm sinking, dying, etc., throw it onto nine or sixteen or whatever, and and uh, say my last words. But yeah. So uh, it was dead. It got it gets wet on the ride home and then it stays on because it's in like survival mode or something. And like this like little flashlight comes on and uh and I, if you try to turn it off it turns back on so it drains itself. And I forgot to charge it. So, uh, I stayed well within cell range um on Wednesday and just fished the inshore zone for a uh, bass and halibut. Uh I've been doing a three-way rig with a crankbait on one end, uh, on the end of a four-foot leader, and uh, the end of like a the two-foot leader have like a twelve-ounce sinker, and then slow troll it at about one and a half to two and a half miles an hour. And uh, I've been cleaning up on bass doing this, but I've but I've been doing it with the intent of fishing for halibut. But it's pretty obvious to me that this is not a halibut rig. A uh, halibut will be bycatch. Uh, at least the where I'm fishing, I'm fishing over like hard bottom and stuff. And yeah, I, I would. I don't know. I don't know. I'm I'm no expert on on halibut. I've caught uh, a number of them from shore, 
and a couple um, here and there on the boat, but all all short. I've never caught a legal, and uh, that, and so I'm I am not qualified to to speak on the matter and and be like, well, you gotta do this, but uh, it's. I would think that it's you fish like hard bottom areas, not necessarily like the reefiest reef, uh, not like a jagged rocky area, but like, um, you know, just like harder substrate um, instead of mud. But you might also, you're probably also going to find them in the mud. <laughs> I don't fucking know. It's like, like, oh, you got to fish, you know. I've heard so many different things. Oh, they're right next to the hard bottom. So they're like, they're in the mud right off of the, off of the rock. So, uh, I've kind of thought that like, okay, well, like approach the stone via GPS, drop down the rig, slow troll over it. And you're going to fish more soft bottom than hard bottom. You'll, you'll go over the top of the rock and you might catch a bass on top of the rock. And then hopefully there's a halibut on either side of the rock. That's that's been my logic, and uh, it has not worked out for me. Uh, I mean, it has. I've caught a shitload of bass this winter. Uh, I've done really well on the bass, but the halibut are just they're MIA, not hungry. Uh, I don't know. So yeah, so I, I decided that if I'm if I'm gonna keep doing this, which I still want to do it, I, I like catching the bass. Um, uh, I I will admit that like trolling for bass is a little bit boring. It's not quite as exciting as like you know cast out reel in a swim bait or whatever. But um, I still get bit, so it's fun and uh, you know. So I've been doing that, and then this time I was like, okay, so I'm gonna use the crankbait. I'm going to troll the crankbait on one side, and I'm going to have the same, like, three-way rig, 12-ounce sinker, and I'll troll five-inch swim bait on the other side. So I had, like, a bait fish pattern swim bait. And uh, uh, and I was getting bit on both of them. Um, m- more so, I ended up with 15 bass. Uh, a little more more than half of them were legal. Um, biggest was, like, a calico at three pounds ish probably under that i think three pounds is a stretch but it doesn't matter uh so yeah it was it was good bass and for and it was a 51 degree water temperature so last week last time i fished what was it oh yeah huh, it was saturday <laughs> i like literally went over that uh last time i fished i think it was like 55 56 degree water temps and this time, so the wind blew through again, like Sunday through Tuesday. Uh, it was kind of gnarly once again. And then uh, I guess it really cooled off the water, down to 51. Peaked at like 53 by the end of the day. But the fish did not mind. They bit. So, uh, yeah, uh, mostly I'd say so 15, 15 fish. I want to say like 10 sand bass, 5 calicos. Um, so that was a little bit better showing of, of the calicos, uh, than it has been as of late. Um, I'd say about, I guess like half of the fish were legal. Like the first, I want to say like the first, like six out of seven of the, uh, first fish were, were legal fish. And I was like, oh, I easily had my limit. Like I, I could have, I only kept two, but I had four legal fish in the boat in like five minutes and I was like, okay, this is going to be a good day. But I'm also like really trying to focus on getting away from the bass and trying like halibut, trying for halibut. And so I wanted to work this one zone that was, um, I wasn't really, I'm not really sure exactly what kind of bottom substrate it is. I'm assuming that it's hard bottom, but it's not reefy. Uh, so I wanted to try that area and, uh, uh, really just put in a few hours of, of slow trolling and being super boring and listening to podcasts and waiting for a bite. And, uh, I got bored of that real quick, (laughs) tried a, uh, tried a new stone right next to it that for some reason I'd never seen before. And it was like, it was loaded and, um, picked off a bunch more bass over there. So, uh. Yeah, by the time I decided I wanted to actually keep my limit of bass, uh, like 
all of all of the the legals were done biting and uh and then it was all shorts like the last like seven fish or so were shorts and so i was just kind of done with it and uh hit it in by like noon or so so that was good another nice weather day for there um i saw not i guess a little bit of bait both days not not a whole lot not a whole lot of uh not not really much on the meter there was some birds working here and there but like nothing too crazy but it it was i have been seeing turns locally so that i've i've been digging that not just googan birds that are being all silly and googany but uh yeah so that's that's the reports and that's some little details on it but uh i'm excited to keep I've I've still got some vigor for rock fishing. I was I was joking around last week that um, we'll all be excited for all of a week about rockfish opener, and I have noticed on the boards that uh, people are do seem a little bit more like woke to uh, the to the rockfish species and being a little bit more interested this year than I have seen before. So that's kind of cool. Like I was I was looking at uh, different rockfish species that. There, you know, there's a bunch of them that look really, 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 really similar. Like the, like I, in my opinion, if if you're, I don't know, if if you don't have 2020 vision or if you're not being particularly attentive, I really think that like a rosy rockfish, a starry rockfish, a freckled rockfish, and a honeycomb rockfish, pretty much all look the same. You you'd just be like, oh, that's just some dink ass shit, and then um, if you're a, uh, and you know, there it's probably too small to even eat, so. A lot of people just turn that thing into a floater and see you later. But uh, uh, but I was looking at Milton Love's books on it, and I was looking at uh, MexicanFish.com. Shout out. And uh, I noticed uh, a nice little trick on MexicanFish.com. So that's a really good database for fish species online. Bless. Sorry. Um... You can find, uh, they, they do a really good job of, uh, describing the fish and like, you know, like, oh, this one's got like 12 to 14, you know, rays in its fins and blah, blah, blah. And it's from here to there. And here's like, and they normally offer like four real world pictures of them out of the water. So you have a pretty good idea of how they look. If like, you know, if, if the fish grows up to like, say like 20 inches or something like that, they'll have like a, uh, a pretty good variety of like, oh, here's like an eight incher like caught in La Jolla and here's like a 15 incher caught uh in San Quentin and here's a uh 19 incher caught at the Channel Islands or something like that so uh, uh and you know it's they're all pretty well laid out and uh Mr. Ben has contributed uh quite a number of uh of fish species identification pictures to that so and they're all really very nice and clear so good on you ben shout out so uh yeah so i was looking at that and uh, uh and they they do have this little like they have a little key at the i don't know it's not a key but it's a they have a little paragraph at the bottom that says for most of the rockfish species at least that says oh like this species is um uh, could be confused say like the freckled rockfish could easily be confused with the uh, rosy rockfish and the honeycomb rockfish but then it'll say well the you know the uh, rosy rockfish has the has purple or pinkish blotches over the top of its lateral line so uh, the others don't or the honeycomb rockfish has uh, its scales below the lateral line have like a brownish edge so then it has like a honeycombed effect like uh and then the freckled rockfish has freckles i don't fucking know i gotta look at that one again (laughs) but it's been out in the sun too long but uh yeah so that's uh that's a good that's a good database and i'm excited to uh to keep taking pictures of the dinks and stuff and uh be better about uh descending devices this year i've uh i'm setting up i've set up a rod with 
with the descending device and uh I'll be I'll be happier to send the dinks down and be be happy about catching the dinks and uh identifying them and not being worried about them, you know, being pelican food and whatnot. So yeah. And then I'll be I'll be fishing uh down in you know, six hundred plus feet of water. There's a few attractive spots that I can't wait to get over to. I might do them this weekend. I'll get to that, but um that's uh there's a lot of a lot of rockfish still to go. I've been seeing some Mexican rockfish uh popping up, then the black gill rockfish popped up now that we're allowed to fish however deep. And uh the sunsets sunset rockfish versus vermilions i was i was making a a silly point about uh about them last week and uh you can't really tell the difference but uh uh ben (laughs) once again i really should get around to like deciding on my own ethics of like whether i should be just shouting people out like without without their knowledge but uh uh my uh, internet pal Ben believes that uh like the you know the sunsets once they once they die so that's the asterisk um they'll their colors will really they'll either kind of brighten up as sunsets will or they'll they'll darken to more of a brick red like as vermilions will so he says that he's found that deeper than 250 in uh the San Diego area uh they'll uh, it seems to be where the sunsets are and they've once once they die they're pretty much always like you know like scarlet orange kind of and then the uh vermilions are in like less than 200 feet and they'll be like a a, a brick red so uh i ca- i did did i notice that i'll have to take a quick look pull up some photos while i'm here but uh well yeah 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 so I'd be willing to agree with that, uh, at least from my from my fish this week or last weekend. It looks like the one vermilion that I kept, the one red that I kept in shallow, is definitely darker than the ones I kept from like three hundred thirty feet or so. Those came out kind of almost orange, a fiery orange. So. It's something to keep in mind. Uh, once again, um, if if you keep there, there's nothing in the rules that say you can't keep um, ten sunset rockfish. But uh, California Department of Fish and Wildlife may or may not be privy to the fact that there are sunset rockfish. They were only identified like ten years ago or something like that, ten fifteen years ago as a separate species the law states you can only keep four vermilions uh it says nothing about sunset rockfish so if you keep 10 sunset rockfish technically you might be right if they are in fact sunset rockfish but the only like way at this point to really like prove it is through genetic testing so be be prepared to either pay that ticket or pay for genetic testing so, so have fun kids and tell me how it goes send an email my way but uh yeah so so the uh the reds are kind of uh i I still haven't quite figured how i really want to cook them i really want to do like an italian um pasta dish excuse me um i haven't nailed what kind of pasta dish with fish would would really like slay but the uh the Boccaccio I'm definitely gonna deep fry, and then the uh, then the chili peppers that I kept I'm I'm gonna use them for bait for Link God, but uh, they're small enough and they're slender enough that I think they'd be a good something good to use. Put them on a, like a ten knot hook and send it. And then the white fish were were consumed as ceviche, ceviche. So yeah, and then I dry aged. My two, uh, I don't know if you can really call it dry aging at that point, but, uh, I kept one calico and one sand bass from Wednesday and then I, uh, I gutted them and then I patted them dry 
as dry as I could and then put them in my little mini fridge and then uh, pulled them out today and filleted them and uh, and they're those were pretty nice fillets very very clean and fairly firm and um, yeah I'm excited to have that and then uh, my pal Vern dropped off 25 pounds of yellowfin tuna to me so I enjoyed some some very fresh poke 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 with uh what was that with uh i used like an orange juice mer- uh base with uh some some kind of soy sauce not just like regular soy sauce it was like a truffle soy sauce and a little teriyaki sauce and then let that marinate for like an hour or two and uh that turned out good throw it over some rice with some avocado very basic varitista so yeah that was that was good stuff but i got to get through all these uh all these inshore fish i got to eat those before i tap back into that got to justify my kills but i will enjoy them for sure i'm not just sitting around thinking oh i got to eat that now but yeah so there was a decent amount of bait uh, down deep in the water, uh, like in the 300 foot range, there's a decent amount of bait. So good amount of life over there. That's cool. Hopefully the water warms up this week. It's, that was, that was some very cold water. Um, I was hoping that, that things would really start to pop by now, but, uh, it was, it's not quite the case, but it'll, it will, it's all But yeah, hopefully there's going to be another little wind uh, wind event on like Thursday over here. Thursday, Wednesday, something like that. And that'll probably keep, you know, it'll keep the water, it'll cool the water back down. But it looks like it might, you know, the toxically optimistic windy.com says, uh, uh, that it's, it could get up to 63 degrees by Tuesday afternoon, the water tent, local water temps. So that would be great. That's, that's, uh, that's mackerel water. That's, uh, that's thresher water. That's whatever water. So, uh, the long range boats are still struggling on the struggle bus with, uh, the bluefin tuna. It's been very hit and miss. I just saw at, uh, the Polaris, the <laughs> The Polaris Supreme got back from however many day uh, with just uh, one grande bluefin for their efforts. So they're out there, but they're they're being tough. But uh, I'm more interested in in when they come within I don't know within twenty twenty five miles ashore, preferably closer. And uh, they will, they will. So it's just a matter of time. But uh, yeah, so. There's all that. So, yeah, um, kind of casually uh, transitioning into the game plan here. Uh, so this, this weekend is when I'm going to fish because I, uh, I got a weekday job for the upcoming weeks or for the upcoming week. I start at 1 p.m., so I could fish beforehand, but I really want to just focus on getting the job done right, not overload myself, and just make sure that my brain is... Um, is uh absorbent spongy you know so yeah so uh, i'm gonna fish this weekend uh the the tides look kind of the tides look really good today and yesterday and uh it was pretty good on wednesday as well but uh it'll still be good tomorrow saturday but uh it's starting to like fade off into that we were on the full moon on wednesday and uh and now we're going to be coming off of that. And so the tides are going to be kind of not slack, but you know, it's going to be a, a slower tidal movement as we like, particularly like Sunday onwards. So I'm kind of like, what would I do? What am I going to do? I don't know. I'm probably going to go look for more rockfish, to be honest. That's probably what I'm going to do. It looks like good enough weather to do that. I can uh, get out there. And uh, go find some deep water fish, go find some little bitty ones to ID or 
try try some lolligo tentacles down tentacles tentacles down down deep on a number 10 hook that would be cool go see what's up with that but yeah rockfish for the most part that's that's what's on my mind right now still go just just to see what's going on i got to i got to cook the rest of that from last week but uh yeah and then uh, I'm kind of wondering, I don't know, anybody listening, if, uh, uh, tell me what your game plan is when, uh, when you got a week tied, when you got, like, not much title movement. What are you doing? Are you just sitting around? Are you catching up on, uh, Love is Blind when you, when, when you're, when the tide's weak? Is that what you guys do? Or, uh, uh, are you, do you, st- do you still fish? Do you, do you have hope when you fish? Are you just smoking weed out there? I don't know. I'm kind of I'm curious about it because you know uh, most of the intro stuff really likes really likes uh really likes the title movement, but and then on but like some of the pelagic stuff likes the slack tide, but I think they like the slack tide in contrast to a strong title movement. That's my presumption. I have not asked an expert. I have not asked the fish, but that has been my presumption. So, like, on... There's going to be one of those weird tides where, yeah, on Monday, um, it's going to be a 0.1 foot low tide at 7.20, right? And then at 2 o'clock... No, this isn't... Okay, let's go to the next day. So, 8.30, 0.2 foot, Right? And then there's technically a high tide at like uh, 2.30 that day. So, you know, six hours later. It, but it doesn't even mark it as a high tide because it just like, like, I don't know. I don't know what it does. It doesn't mark it as a high tide. It just, it just kind of like slacks, but then it starts going again, but really, really fucking slow. There's just a slack tide for like four hours, right? So that happens every month, a couple times a month. And uh, what do you do in that time? Do you expect anything to happen? And then it's a 1.30 a.m. high tide, 5 feet. So it just kind of keeps rising from 8.30 a.m. to 1.30 a.m. the next day. So it's like a 7, 17? Yeah, 17 hour like high tide swing, basically. What is that? What's going on? Yeah. What is the deal? So I don't know, but it'll it'll it's something. Get out there and find out. That's what I'll do. I'll be working for some of that, but for a lot of it, not much of it. For that slack tide, I'll be working. But that morning, that morning doesn't look too bad. But yeah, so. It's looking like good weather up to uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and then it gets windy again, and then the whoo ten foot, nine foot swells on Thursday. Have fun with that. Drops back down to three foot at seven and a half seconds by Friday night, and then we're into the next episode that I won't bother get into. But April fifteenth is the Saturday night bat fight for. Uh, prehistoric soul the website prehistoric soul.com um if you want to if you want to uh go fish for uh if you want to represent your county go fish for some bat rays biggest bat ray of the night wins bragging rights uh on behalf of your county go join prehistoric soul.com it's a forum i like it um good people over there and uh, so that'll be that'll be running from like something like oh, I should really pull it up something like six a.m. that day until midnight. Um, try and catch the biggest bat ray. So I'll be fishing that night with a couple pals. Uh, I really haven't I haven't really tried lately for uh, the shore fishing of of like sharks and rays and cartilaginous critters, but it's been. It's been a tough contest the last several years. The bat ray have uh, have dis- all but disappeared for whatever reason. But uh, 
yeah, so there's there's that. That's just a little teaser, just to let you know if you wanna if you wanna go bat ray fishing with a little skin in the game, uh, go do that. And they have a Facebook uh, group, I believe, that you can join as well. So, yeah, so there's that little thing. Uh, that is eight days away uh, from when I release this episode. So, uh, go do that if you wish. And. Yeah, went over the weather, went over last week, went over this week, and next week, Wolverine coming, fucking Joe DiNardo over here. I'm not tweaking on much, I'm still drawing boats just because, uh, I can, but, uh, I don't know. I guess I was looking at a... Uh, I was looking at... I got a little feedback on my on my boat drawings. And, uh... Objectively speaking, the, the best place to sit on the boat without getting your ass, ass kicked by the conditions is in the back of the boat. And, like, you know, if you're sitting on the bow, you're gonna go up and down the most... Uh, but, and I was kind of thinking that middle of the boat would be, um, you would experience overall the least amount of shifting and rolling and ups and downs because you're at the epicenter, right? Uh, which I suppose would make sense if you're idle, but when you're moving, you want to be at the very back of the boat, so... I do want to keep the weight forward in uh, in the next boat, or I want to keep enough weight forward so that it's like nice and balanced. So I think I'm gonna put the fuel tanks up in the bow, and then I'm gonna have twin uh, twin outboards on the back, and I think probably put the console pretty much in the middle. I want the the driver's seat to be like be able to access all of the trolling rods. Uh, trolling rod positions in the cockpit so I would be basically basically be if if I were to do this I would put the driver's seat swivel seat uh in basically in the center of the cockpit and I'd like to make it a fighting chair as well and then uh I'd be able to just quickly grab any of them and uh and do what I gotta do reel and fish reel and reel in uh empty lines whatever and uh uh, and then probably put the put a live well slash passenger seat forward of the console, and and then the live well would be uh, at like fifteen gallons. It's like a hundred and twenty pounds of water, so that would move. That would be like keep things relatively balanced. If I had say like fifteen gallons on the bow, and then another like uh, of fuel on the bow, and then fifteen gallons of uh, live well water like just forward of the uh of the middle boat uh middle of the boat and then and then me at like 185 and the console like a little bit more towards the rear i think that's a good balanced boat so yeah that was a uh, that was something i was drawing last night but yeah we'll see I'll probably draft things like about a hundred more times before I get money. But, uh, yeah, so... So feel free to email the show at whenfishingpodcast at gmail.com. I feel like uh, this episode in particular, I brought up a lot of discussion points that I'm kind of curious about what other people think. And, uh... Uh, I would it would be it would be interesting to to uh to reflect on uh, what you think and what I think and what we think and you know uh we can all become a singularity based off of the uh the opinions that we can formulate together so that would be exciting and revolutionary but uh uh yeah so that's available to you and uh I'll just be waiting for the rest of the week just refreshing my email just drinking coffee and hitting that button for the next 114 hours. 
So, you know, uh, be a, be a pal and, uh, and send something my way. And then, uh, also I haven't said this yet because I think it's annoying, but, uh, now I'm like desperate. No, (laughs) Uh, (laughs) um, uh, now you know what's coming. Rate and subscribe if you like it. If you don't like it, um, send me a feisty email, but don't rate, don't rate it. Don't rate it negatively if you feel that way. It, it, maybe it's just not for you. I totally understand. I'm not like, uh, I'm not a, I'm not a particularly professional operation. I am in certain ways. Uh, I think this, I think this audio is pretty damn good. You're welcome. But uh, the person talking is not like an expert, and I think a lot of people tune into these things to to listen to experts. And I'm just kind of, I'm trying to put myself in a position of like being a, uh, uh, you know, not quite an everyday Joe, but just being like, I'm I'm just trying to be observant as I can and sharing those observations uh, without revealing too much and like, um, and. Like it's it's kind of what I would want to hear other people say when they report on things uh, from like uh, anecdotal evident anecdotal standpoints and uh, using those data points to to uh, you know make make smarter fishing decisions have better days on the water and stuff because like you know there's a lot of you know how to fish a crankbait and how to you know how to bottom fish and how to chase tuna and stuff like that but it's like the you know it is the minute details of like um of you know how certain areas respond to certain tides and all these like i mean that's just one tiny example of like the plethora of information that you can gather on your own and uh yeah so um that's that's what this is. I, I've already I've said this before, but uh, yeah, I hope it I hope it entertains you. And if it does, and if you feel uh, remotely informed with a grain of salt or and or entertained, then please uh, rate it on your listening platform of choice. And uh, maybe maybe this podcast will uh, respond positively in some way or another. I'm not really sure what that would look like. Um, I'm not sure how that would affect your listening experience or my production experience. It would potentially, uh, you know, temporarily raise my self-esteem, I'm sure. And then, and then I would, you know, then I'd come back down and I would feel empty and, and I'd go searching for that uh, grat- gratification again and end up in an endless cycle. So go and rate it, you know? So, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's all I really got. Um, uh, so, yeah, I'd like this to not be a one-way street, but you know, if you don't feel like acknowledging me, I'm gonna keep going. I'm not gonna stop. So, anyways, have a good one. Have a nice rest of your week. Be safe. Good luck. Out there.